it's a great pleasure to introduce uh, uh, Mengmi. Mengmi was a fantastic postdoc mm. in our lab, now back in, in, in Singapore. Uh, it's actually uh, uh, not only uh, amazing work that she's going to talk about, but it's uh, uh, particularly uh, commendable that uh, it's 4 a.m. in Singapore and, and she woke up uh, specifically to deliver this, uh, this presentation. So that's, that's particularly exciting. This work um, has uh, just been accepted in, in NeurIPS and, uh, and she's going to be presenting that in, in, in NeurIPS as well uh, very soon. So it's um, uh, very, very exciting uh, to, to, to have her here. And so uh, Mengmi, please go ahead. All right, thanks, Gabriel, for the introduction. Uh, so, hi, everyone. My name is Meng Mi. Today, I will talk about uh, visual search and how we can use visual search as a tool to explore some inherent biases in deep nets. Feel free to interrupt me during my presentation if you have any questions. So, this is a joint work with Shashi, uh, Chechen, Jeremy, and Gabriel. Visual search is a challenging problem in natural vision. For example, we often search for our car keys in the living room or look for our friends in a party crowd. Here is an example of uh, visual search trial with eye movements recorded. In this example, this person is looking for a calculator. The yellow dot denotes the eye movement, and the rec rectangle um, denotes the uh, ground truth target location. After looking around, eventually this person uh, managed to find where the calculator is. Intriguing property of some classical uh, search tasks is an asymmetry such that finding a target A among distractors B can be easier than finding Bs among A. Now, let me explain what I meant with this uh, specific example. In the first experiment, the target and the distractors differ in lighting orientation, but both are in horizontal direction. While the target receives the light from left to right, the distractors are receiving the light in the uh, reverse direction. However, in the second experiment, the lighting condition changes to vertical direction. Surprisingly, psychologists have found that humans search for targets faster in the vertical lighting conditions compared with the horizontal lighting conditions. Thus, this finding makes us wonder like, how such asymmetry is implemented in the human brain. And where does this asymmetry come from? Does it come from uh, natural statistics, for example, we get used to see all the objects with vertical lighting conditions more often simply because the sun is always shining above in the sky. It turns out that in addition to asymmetry in lighting conditions, there are many other search asymmetries as well. In total, we examined six foundational psychophysics experiments showing visual search asymmetry in the literature. Each experiment has two conditions. In experiment one, we studied curves versus lines. In experiment three, we studied a certain shapes without intersections among crosses, or vice versa. In experiment four, we included this uh, rotated T's versus rotated L's. Experiment five, we introduced this, uh, this oblique uh, lines versus vertical lines in the homogeneous case when the uh, distractors are the same type. In experiment six, we study the heterogeneous case when these structures are uh, oblique lines, but with different um, orientation. Visual search has been explored in both neurophysiology and psychology. However, the mechanism underlying how neural representations guide visual search and the lead us to the search asymmetry remains mysterious. By putting together all these pieces of evidences in neuroscience and psychology, one of our goals is to develop an image computable model for asymmetry in visual search. By quantitatively assessing these models' behaviors and comparing them with humans in a variety of experiments, we hope to gain a better understanding of this neural mechanism involved in search asymmetry. Here, um, I'm going to pro uh, we propose this uh, an eccentricity uh, dependent uh, deep net for visual search. At first, the model takes a target image as input and extracts this feature map through a stack of convolution blocks. Then the model takes the search image as input and extracts this uh, corresponding feature map through the same stack of convolution blocks. Note that in the beginning of each search trial, the model starts fixating at the center of the search image as indicated by the green circle. And then the model continuously shifts its fixations until the target is found. Next, the model applies top-down modulation from the feature maps of the target 
onto the feature maps of the search image. This top-down modulation produces three different attention maps across three different feature levels. The three individual um, attention maps can then be normalized and linearly weighted to produce an overall attention map. A winner takeoff mechanism then selects the maximum location of the attention map as the location for the next fixation. This process iterates until the model finds the target. Here we assume the model has infinite inhibitional return and therefore it does not revisit uh, previous locations. For the visual uh, processor of the model, we use the deep fan uh, pre trained down image net for object recognition. However, Current 2D CNNs assume, uh, assume this uniform sampling within a layer and do not reflect the property of eccentricity dependence. The previous work uh, by Freeman et al. has shown that in the ventral stream of primate brains, within the same area, the receptive field sizes increases with increasing eccentricity. Across multiple visual areas, the receptive field sizes also increase given the same eccentricity. Several observations from the literature indirectly support this idea that eccentricity dependent sampling enhances search asymmetry. Thus, here we introduce this novel um, uh, pooling layers in VG16 to capture this eccentricity dependence. Now, let's zoom into this uh, uh, proposed eccentricity dependent pooling layer and see how it works. So, in this example, the model is fixating the center of the image. For any given unit G, its pooling window size is a function of its eccentricity. In other words, the further away the unit G is located from the center fixation, the larger pooling window size it has. Here we reproduce this plot of the eccentricity versus receptive field sizes on a market monkey. So in order to generate the comparative uh, plot for ECC net, we did the following experiment. First, uh, we asked the ECC net to fix at the center of this black image. Then we introduce a white spot on the image and present to ECC net. For each given location of the bright spot, we can measure the eccentricity and the neuron response of each artificial neuron in this pooling layer. This gives us the uh, plot of eccentricity versus receptive field size on the right. It's worth noting that the plot of ECC net is not an exact match of the monkey plot on the left, but it preserves the similar trend. To give you a better understanding of the receptive field size for each unit in each layer, here we are providing the visualization results of one example image and its corresponding eccentricity dependent sampling at different layers. Different from the previous work, we emphasize that this eccentricity dependent mechanism is applied across multiple layers of ECC net. In contrast to uh, most computational models where they have been trained on specific visual search tasks, the weights of our model were only pre-trained uh, for object recognition tasks on ImageNet data set. And we did not do any fine tuning using any human data or any ground truth data in asymmetry search experiments. Back in the old days, uh, when scientists do not have the luxury of tracking human eye movement data in visual search experiments, they measure the reaction time of K-press as a means to assess the search speed. Thus, eye movements in the six uh, psychophysics experiments I presented before were not reported in the paper. On the other hand, most computational models in visual search produce a sequence of fixation. Therefore, in order to compare the results between the models and the humans, we conducted an additional experiment where we measured both the K-press reaction time and the eye moment uh, data uh, simultaneously. This reaction time uh, re results from a combination of time taken by the eye moment plus a motor response time taken during a finger key press, we perform a linear regression on the eye tracking data and the reaction time as the figure shown on the right. This gives us a linear model to convert the number of fixations to reaction time, where the slope of this line denotes the fixation duration and the intercept indicates the motor response time. Before 
before uh, we dive into this uh, quantitative results, let me first show you uh, some of the uh, visualization examples of pre-existing fixation sequences by ECG net. In this particular search trial, under vertical lighting conditions, ECG net starts the search from the center of the image, denoted by the yellow dot. And then it takes the ECG net only one fixation to find the ground truth target, as indicated by the uh, red box. In contrast, the ECC net searches under horizontal lighting conditions that is shown on the right, it takes the ECC net two fixations to find the target. Again, I couldn't emphasize more that ECC net is using pre-trained based on image net in object recognition, and the ECC net has never been exposed to such a simple stimuli during training. Moreover, ECC net has never been fine tuned using any human eye movement data or ground truth target locations in the visual search task. The proposed model shows search asymmetry and quantitatively captured human behavior with, uh, when their reaction time plots were compared uh, side by side. For example, in experiment A of curves versus lines, the x-axis shows the number of distractors on the search image, and the uh, y-axis shows the reaction time in milliseconds. The, the model looks for the straight line among curved lines, similar to humans, increasing the number of distractors led to longer reaction times. In other words, the slope of the red curve is positive for both the humans and the model. But when the target and the, the distractor were reversed, that is, humans have to search for a curved line among straight lines, the blue curve is relatively flat, and it is below the red curve. So this indicates that the reaction time was shorter, and there is a minimal dependence on the number of distractors for reaction time. In other words, it's easier to search for a curved line among straight lines than the reverse condition. This also holds true for um, ECC net. Similarly, the model quantitatively captured the human behavior for the rest of the experiments as well, except for experiment E. To further investigate this uh, polarity of search asymmetry, we introduced a new metric called asymmetry index to better compare different baseline models and ECC net with human results. Now, let me first introduce the um, definition of asymmetry index. Within each experiment, we can first define the easy versus hard condition based on human performance. For example, in the figure on the right, the, curve, the red curve is above blue curve. Thus, searching for lines among curves is a harder condition for humans compared with searching for a curve among lines. We can then compute the slope of these two individual lines. Then with this two slope of a hard and easy condition for the model, we can now define the asymmetry index as a formula shown here for each experiment, where um, the H is the uh, slope for the hard condition defined in human experiments, and the E is the slope for the easy condition defined in human experiments. Therefore, if the model uh, follows the human asymmetry patterns for a given experiment, it would have a positive asymmetry index. And if there is no symmetry at all, then the um, asymmetry index equals zero. And the negative value indicates that the model does show asymmetry, but the asymmetry is the opposite of humans. Based on this newly defined metric, we calculate the asymmetry index for humans. It is around uh, 0 0.6. Interesting. Interestingly, our proposed method, which is ECC net, scored quite closely to humans in terms of asymmetry index. Please note that this proposed model had no previous exposure to all the images in the current study, and the model was not trending in any of these given tasks beforehand. It did not um, have this, any tuning parameters based dependent on either eye movements or reaction time from humans. And, and it was not designed with the goal of showing asymmetry. Despite all this, it still uh, scored quite closely to humans, which is around 0 0.5. We also considered comparing the results with other visual search models. This includes our first model, which is IVSN. We found that even IVSN shows positive asymmetry index, 
which suggests it performs similar to humans, but it is not as close as ECC net. For baseline models, uh, we compared with chunks, which showed almost zero asymmetry index. This indicates that the chunk has no specific bias for different search conditions. We also compared the results with GBVS. It is a purely bottom-up saliency model. We found that GBVS also scored close to zero, indicating most of the asymmetry is driven by top-down modulation. As a uh, simple pixel matching model also did not show this positive asymmetry, this suggests that the feature biases might happen at the abstract level in the latent uh, space instead of at the uh, pixel space. To understand the mechanism responsible for asymmetry, we ablated uh, the ECC model. First, we tried with top-down modulation from a single feature layer. Second, we we tried top-down modulation from multiple layers, but then we removed the, the eccentricity-dependent pooling layers. Both of them showed a positive asymmetry, but the scores were significantly lower than ECC net. This suggests that both the um, top-down modulation across multiple layers and the eccentricity-dependent pooling layers are important for explaining search asymmetry. Then we tested this effect of training data used to train this uh, base for the visual processor. So first, instead of using ImageNet, we used MNIST to train the model base. We found MNIST does give a uh, positive score, but the score is significantly lower than the score of ECCNet. Second, we trained the model on 90 degrees rotator version of ImageNet. This gives an interesting result that the absolute score was high, but the polarity was negative. This indicates that there exists asymmetry in search condition, but it shows a reverse polarity under all conditions in our experiment. So to elaborate the last uh, two points, uh, for example, in the lighting direction, compared with the polarity of ECC net pre-trained on image net, the polarity for asymmetry has got completely reversed after ECC net has been trained on rotated image net. Instead of using image nets containing millions of natural images with rich varieties of real world statistics, we then train the ECC net on MNIST. It contains only a grid scale handwritten digits. We found that the model trend on MNIST shows a similar asymmetry, but its absolute reaction time, as indicated in the red box, is very far from human. This implies that the model did learn some of the asymmetry biases but it was not able to learn rich features to be able to quickly find the target. So we further evaluated the role of the training regime in other experiments. For example, we trained the model on ImageNet images uh, after applying a fisheye transform to reduce the proportion of straight lines and increase the proportion of curves. Second, we also introduced extra vertical and horizontal lines in the training data thus increasing the proportion of straight lines. Third, to test whether data statistics other than image nets would alter the polarity, we also trained the model on places data set, as well as the, this rotated um, places data set. Due to the time constraint, um, please refer to our paper for more result analysis in this additional experiment. Moreover, to evaluate whether asymmetry depends on the architecture of the visual processor, we replaced VGG16 in IVS and model with ResNet on the six experiment. Though ResNet's uh, backbone does not approximate human behaviors as well as ECC net, it still shows a positive asymmetry index. This suggests search asymmetry is a general effect for deep net. So apart from the, uh, this uh, search asymmetry, to evaluate the model's visual searchability in natural world, we also tested uh, the performance of ECC net on more complex visual search environments. In the first experiment, the model has to search for a target object in an object array. In the second experiment, the model has to search for a target in a more natural environment. The third task, the model has to search for Waldo. To assess the search efficiency of the model, we use the cumulative search score. 
That is, what is the probability that either human subjects or the model could find the target within given certain number of fixations? The x-axis denotes the number of fixations and the y-axis denotes the cumulative probability that the model finds the, the target. We can see that ECCNet approximates the human behaviors on all the three tasks, and it was close to IVSN's performance in, the in terms of search efficiency. In the second column, uh, to assess the spatial temporal similarity between two fixation sequences, we introduced the scan pass score. The scan pass project by ECCNet share more similarities with humans and than the previous IVSN model. Lastly, we assess the distribution of saccade sizes made by humans and the model. We can see ECCNet approximates human saccade distribution much better while IVSN model fails to do so. So here are several um, key messages. First, asymmetries reflect the strong priors in our visual system. It implies the whole we process features to guide search. We introduced this biologically plausible model for visual search with novel eccentricity uh, dependent pooling layers. Our model approximates the human search asymmetry without any prior exposure to any stimuli or task-specific training. We concluded a series of augmentation studies to alter the statistics in the training data. Our experimental results suggest that search asymmetry is a general effect of DeepNet. The results also highlight that asymmetry of search behaviors arises from both the training regime as well as the uh, network architecture. So please feel free to check out our GitHub page for more information. Thank you.